Hello everybody. I am going to be making my first tray today. I am using the tabletop epoxy that I just showed you. And I've sped this way up, but I am mixing 14 ounces total. At first, I thought this would be too much, um, but it actually ended up being just the right amount. And I am going after that crushed velvet look. So I've watched a few other tutorials and I'm giving it a try myself. My mold unfortunately got stained from some of the resin dye that I used previously. However, that did not pose a problem none of it uh, transferred onto this project. So at first I thought maybe 12 ounces would be enough. So I was actually kind of holding back approximately two ounces in the cup. But then I just saw how it was just not reaching the edges. <laughs> and I knew I needed a decent amount to create that kind of crinkle effect. So just pouring out the rest of the resin. Always good to scrape every last little bit. <laughs> giving it a good spritz with 91% isopropyl alcohol, covering it with a net, and waiting about 30 minutes. So I've had this shower curtain liner just kind of sitting around my house for several months. All right, so I am taking that shower curtain liner and I cut it up into smaller pieces. And a couple of things in hindsight. One, I should have not just like thrown it on top of the resin. I should have started in the middle and then smoothed it out to make sure that there were no air bubbles trapped between the plastic and the resin. So you'll see me lift up just like right here. You'll see me lift up the plastic and kind of use my hand to push the large air bubbles out to the sides. And this is sped up, I think, five times as fast. And you'll see the plastic sort of retract and go back to um, a more flat shape. So I will, <clears throat> every 30 minutes, re-crinkle the plastic, getting those air bubbles out. And um, all this was kind of a, a waste of time. So... <laughs> I think you'll see eventually it took me two and a half hours for it to finally, for the plastic to finally hold the crinkles. You do see the two pink coaster molds I have in the background. Uh, I had mixed up some more resin and I was trying to make matching coasters with the uh, plastic and the crinkle, but they did not turn out as well as this um, tray. In fact, I didn't even get to the point where I colored or anything like that um, the resin from the coaster molds. I ended up just unfortunately tossing the resin uh, from those. But I will try this again with them. Um, I just know now that and this was kind of a particular cold, particularly cold day, like a cold fall day. Um, I need to wait much longer before even attempting to crinkle the plastic on top of the resin. So that was part of the issue with the coasters. They were just not as forgiving as this tray was. So again, this is... Uh, sped up and another 30 minutes. I just didn't want 
to wait too long and then miss that window of opportunity. So notice I'm using my bare hands at this point. There's no reason to use gloves if you're over top of plastic. And I didn't want all the crinkles to be in the same direction. So that's why you'll see me kind of turn my hands and go in different directions. All right. So this is my last adjustment. It was late at night and I knew that this would be it. <laughs> so I kind of recrinkled, but I also pushed down around the edges to make sure it kind of stayed in place. All right, so this was in the morning and I was just so excited to see if it worked. <laughs> and at first I didn't think the plastic was gonna come off easily. So at first I was resigned to just waiting until later in the day, <clears throat> but then I realized that it was just the part on the edge that was kind of weird. But once I got it going, it would come off very easily. So because of the way the plastic kind of crinkled and then retracted uh, several times, there was some spillover of resin. So I do spend some time kind of picking off the overflow from the edges. Um, it was still soft. So it wasn't particularly sticky, but it was pliable. And I knew that this was the best window of time to use my hands and then a pair of scissors, being really careful not to cut the mold, um, but to use the scissors to trim some of that resin that had kind of gone over the edges. So here are my nail chrome powders. Remember how I like to repurpose. <laughs> and um, when you apply this to your nail, you actually use an eyeshadow applicator just like that. So I wanted to see if that would work. And it didn't really work that well. So I ended up switching to just a paintbrush. You'll see that shortly. But I knew I wanted to apply this chrome powder while the resin was still soft. Again, not sticky or tacky, but just pliable. And the reason I didn't want to wait until it was really dry and, and much harder was because the chrome powder would not uh, stick. Unless I used some other kind of method to get it to stick. So I just wanted to take advantage of the window of time that I had and apply the chrome powders. So this is a green-ish color, and I'm going to speed this up shortly. Oh, that was my testing area. So I have the compressed air, and I wanted to spray it to see if the chrome powder would stick, and it did. So I was very happy about that. So I'm just deciding what colors to use. I end up going for the green, a gorgeous purple, a blue I think you'll see one's more like a gray and then also a sort of shimmery whitish glitter <laughs> you'll see again these are nail chrome powders but they're basic basically made of the same thing um, say they're made of mica powder so uh, it's not a whole lot that I have I ended up using up a couple of the little containers that I have. But I was really, really happy with the colors and the crinkles. I ended up having to get a different paintbrush because, yeah, <laughs> I just did. The first one was just kind of like falling apart. So I was trying to kind of rub the crumb powder into the resin. So I was using a little bit of force and that first paintbrush that I used after the eyeshadow applicator, it just started to really fray. So I used the compressed air to get off any excess powder. Probably should have done that outside. 
I'm in my garage and the garage door is open. So I have plenty of ventilation and I have a window behind me with, um, it cracked. So I've got some cross ventilation. So at this point, I, I could have waited. I could have just let that be, uh, and then poured the black resin later. But I, I also know I could do it now if I wanted to, I didn't have to wait for the first layer to completely harden. So I think, yeah, I decided to cut a little bit more of that excess off. And then right now I think I'm pouring eight ounces. Yeah. Eight ounces of resin. This is very much sped up. I do not stir that fast in real life. And then I dye it using two things. One, a um, resin dye. Actually, yeah, I split, I think I split it up. I split the eight ounces, I think four ounces and four ounces. Cause I wasn't really sure how much black resin I needed to cover this up. So just doing some more last minute trimming, make sure it's, it's the best it can be before I pour the black. And anyway, I end up dyeing the uh, resin with resin dye and some uh, black alcohol ink. I will hold up both of those to the camera so you can see. I don't own any resin um, powders, like any of the actual mica powder that people are supposed to use to dye resin. <laughs> so because I was disappointed that the coasters didn't work out the first time I tried, I am now trying a technique that I've seen others try where you put the powder down. Uh, this is again, the same nail chrome powder, same colors that I used on the tray. Um, putting that down first directly into the mold and boy, does that stick really easily to the silicone. So I did not have enough black <clears throat> resin, as you can tell. So I am mixing up more and then simultaneously making the coaster. I made sure that I drizzled the black resin around the edges and that it got kind of into some of those crevices. And so I'm using my popsicle stick to just make sure that the resin gets all the way to the edge and then fills in because I had some holes in those areas. So just making sure that that fills in those holes. I had overfilled my coaster, so I was trying to scoop resin out, out of it without scratching the powder. And then I think I mixed up four more ounces, I think, of the black. <clears throat> so I probably needed a good, I've lost track of the math. <laughs> um, and I'm a math person and it's late at night and I'm not a night person. Sorry. I probably added another good 10 ounces of black resin total. That's an estimate. I really should measure exactly how much that tray holds. Um, when I've made my bowls in it, I do roughly 12 ounces uh, for the bowls. And like I said before, I did about <clears throat> 14 ounces of just the clear resin. So 14 plus an estimated 10 is 24 ounces. I will have to verify that another time. So I am torching and then spritzing with alcohol. <laughs> Make sure you go in that order. And I'm laughing at myself because I have made the mistake of spraying the alcohol and then torching. And then you get flames. So I overfilled the coaster and I slightly overfilled the tray. So that's what all those black marks are. I'm just like cleaning some of it out with my finger and I don't know. I was just in the moment. So covering with a net and I think I have a, yep, about nine hours later. <laughs> so this is in the early evening and I liked the coaster, but I didn't like, I didn't like the matteness of the coaster. 
So I will come back to that shortly and show you what I did with it. And here we go for the big reveal of the tray. Black was nice, back was nice and shiny. Boom. There it is, folks. It worked. It's not perfect, but it worked. And I'm very happy with it. It's still on the soft side. It's still not completely hardened. The resin that I use, I think, has a full cure time of 72 hours. So while it's still on the softer side, I am taking my craft knife and just cutting away any of that excess that I couldn't get before with the scissors um, or that the black had created. There were some crinkles that were sticking up on the back, so I'm just taking that craft knife and kind of smoothing those out. Not worried about them too much because it's on the bottom. <laughs> There were air bubbles, so I guess that's one thing. If I do this again, I might pay more attention to getting the air bubbles out and uh, potentially use casting resin, which I do not own. So I was working on this other project, trying to um, encase shark's teeth in resin, in the clear resin in the middle of that mold, but um, I could not get the air bubbles out of it. It looks orange because there's a cured orange and red layer on the very bottom, and I was trying to add a clear layer in the middle to put shark teeth into, but I could not get the air bubbles out. I had a really hard time. So I decided to try the raindrop technique, and I thought this looked so cool, but then I thought, Brianna, why are you putting clear droplets and then once those dry you'll have to put another clear layer on top of them to make it a flat coaster and then the droplets are just going to disappear when you do that so I was frustrated <laughs> but at this point I'm like okay I wasn't thrilled with the coaster to begin with so I'm just experimenting so I thought hmm let me try putting a drop of alcohol black alcohol ink on each drop that didn't look right the ink started to run and I knew I still had a little bit of clear resin left in that um, other mold that I was trying to do, to do the shark teeth in. So I decided to spread out the black alcohol ink, pour a little bit of that clear resin, knowing that it's much easier to get air bubbles out of resin when it is spread thin. So using the popsicle stick to make sure I get that clear resin all the way to the edge. Meanwhile, swirling the black alcohol ink, not trying to mix it completely, but it's definitely important to push the resin all the way to that edge without it going over if you can help it. I will be trying the raindrop technique another time. So these are actually... Um, shells and very small shark teeth in the middle area that we found at uh, Calvert Cliffs State Park in Maryland. And so I'm just taking the remaining clear resin and sealing in the back. So this is a coaster mold that I used and then I spray painted the back with a blue spray paint because I just wasn't happy with it being perfectly clear. And so again, I'm taking my popsicle stick and pushing the resin all the way to the edge without going over. And here's a close up. So that is the tray. And I just think it's so cool how you can have so much dimension, yet it's flat. <laughs> and then that's the coaster, still wet, but I think I salvaged it, folks. I'm happy with it. And there's the curing back of the shark tooth coaster. So here's a sneak peek. I'm making a marble tumbler. And then there's another coaster there too. <laughs> here's a couple of the shots. Thank you all for watching. This was really fun to make. And I'll see you next time.
拜拜。